بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فائیو زیرو نائن زیرو او لیول بایولوجی چیپٹر سیونٹین انہیریٹنس وی گونٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ سلیکشن اینڈ ایولوشن ان دس ویڈیو ناؤ ایز یو لوک ایٹ دا سلیبس فار سیونٹین پوائنٹ فور اٹ سیز ڈسکرائب نیچرل سلیکشن ود ریفرنس ٹو ویریشن ود ان پاپولیشنز پروڈکشن آف مینی آف اسپرنگ دیٹ از اوور پروڈکشن دین اسٹرگل فار سروائیول وچ از سروائیول آف دا فٹس انکلوڈنگ کمپٹیشن فار ریسورسز then reproduction by individuals that are better adapted to the environment than others and passing on of the on of their alleles to the next generation so the ones which are beneficial those alleles will be passed on please don't say genes it is the alleles which are passed on then number 2 describe how the inherited features of a population can evolve over time as a result of natural selection i'll give you some examples of it giraffe examples then describe the development of uh, str- strains of antibiotic resistant malaria including mrsa as an example of natural selection then artificial selection selection by humans of animals or plants with desirable features so that is all about human benefit in fact i say human greed then crossing these to produce the next generation then selection of offspring showing their desirable features then repetition over many generations and that will finally we will get the organism or we will get a high yielding uh, wheat crop or a high yielding rice crop or we can get high milk yielding cows and the last is describe the role of artificial selection in the production of economically important plants so high yielding crops and animals high yielding high milk yielding cows now just please go through this example with me and then i will explain to you how this whole thing is going to evolve first we have a population of mice and they moved into a new area where the rocks are very dark now due to natural genetic variation some mice are black and some are tan now the tan mice are more visible to predatory birds than black mice thus the tan mice are eaten at a higher frequency than the black mice only the surviving mice reach reproductive age and leave offsprings Now because black mice had a higher chance of leaving offspring than tan mice the next generation contains a higher fraction of black mice than the previous generation so you see this is an example of natural selection number 1 there has to be very variation variation means there had to be black and tan mice now they move into area where the rocks are very dark now some are at a disadvantage and some are at an advantage the dark ones are at advantage because they are camouflaged so the birds can't see them so the birds don't eat them while the tan ones are very conspicuous and they can they are very outstanding so their birds can easily see them and so the birds are going to eat them so now we are left more with the black mice now the black mice will have children and more children more mice so black mice will have more mice more black mice more black mice and so on and so forth so more and more and more black mice so the higher fraction of black mice than the previous generation now, now let's look at example 2 first we have a phenotypic variation exists within the population there is the original and then we have the mutated ones now number 2 specific traits confer fitness advantage now here sorry example variation in beetle shell markings now some of them what happens specific traits confer fitness advantage predator fears the mutated form eats the original form so the original ones are eaten up now what happens in the third situation individuals with those traits benefit from increased reproductive success mutated form out reproduces the original form now because one of the organisms is at a disadvantage so they will not survive their numbers will decrease i'm not saying they'll all finish but the ones which are at a selective advantage those will reproduce and pass on the desired alleles to their offsprings desired alleles to their offsprings so now evolution is going to occur now I just want you to develop some terminology which you need some sort of a vocabulary which you need for these questions. So first of all we talk about genes and variation. So what is a population? A population is a group of individuals of the same species that mate and produce offsprings. 
so we have to understand we can have a population of uh, black elephants we can have a population of uh, white uh, black uh, sorry black cheetahs we can uh, have a population of green parrots so population has to be one specific species can't be you just can't say population of birds you can't say population of insects you can't say population of trees you have to say a population of mango trees a population of oak trees now gene pool all genes in the alleles for those genes present in a population so we have we have talked about in a previous video about three alleles for blood group then we have allele frequency the number of times an allele occurs in a gene pool compared to the total number of alleles in that pool for the same age like here you can say 48% are heterozygous black then 16% are heterozygous black and then 36% are homozygous brown now let's look at a few more points which are very important first of all there has to be variation there has to be variation individuals show variation some variations are more favorable than the others then we have overproduction population produce too many young and many must die and then we have natural selection natural selection favors the best suited at that time at that very time and then inheritance variations are inherited the best suited variants have more offsprings the best suited vari variants have more offsprings now let's look at another example of natural selection natural selection of finches so what did we originally had we had seed eating finches from the mainland now many continued to eat seeds lots of competition among the seed eating finches many did not survive population of seed eating finches remained stable now on the other hand now look at the look at the shape of the beak the shape of the beak is very different here the shape of the beak is very different these eat seeds a few had slightly different beaks they could not they could eat insects for far less competition for food among insect eating finches far more of these finches survived population of insect eating finches increased so this is another example of natural selection of finches darwin's whole uh, journey was in the galapagos islands that were all about these finches now another example of natural selection of giraffes now using the darwin wallace theory with giraffes in each generation more giraffes could be born than the food supply could support now in each generation some giraffes would inherit longer necks and some would inherit shorter necks all giraffes would compete for the same food source giraffes with longer necks would obtain more food have a higher survival rate and produce more of produce some offsprings as a result succeeding generations would show an increase in the number of individuals with longer necks so again this is an example of natural selection and once upon a time we had short neck giraffes as well but now we don't have any of those are left those are finished those didn't have enough food for them available the food wasn't available for them so they died the ones the taller trees were there so more of the giraffes with, uh, with long necks survived now what is artificial selection artificial selection is the process of breeding plants and animals for particular traits and it is called also selective breeding the selection process is artificial when human preferences for specific traits have a significant effect on the changes in a particular population or species so what is artificial selection basically is human benefit we want a special type of uh, any animal for a certain very very personal gain like you want high yielding cows milk yielding cows so more money you want a crop which is uh, producing more fruit you want a crop which is uh, fungus resistant bacterial disease resistance why because if you, if the if the crop has these diseases then the leaves curl up and there's less fruit then so we don't want those sort of plants so artificial selection the process of selection conducted under human direction for example by allowing only like individuals to breed breeders have created the great variety of dog breeds and crop plants so we had the ancestral wolf and derived dog breeds you can see all these which have now come into existence 
and you can look at these and the derived crops. So you had this crop and now you have cauliflower and broccoli and you have Brussels sprouts and you have cabbage. Now, just a brief overview of natural selection and artificial selection. Natural selection is natural variation, differences among individuals of a species. Artificial selection, nature provides the variation among different organisms and humans select those variations they find useful. Now, what is overproduction? Most species will produce far more offspring than can possibly survive. Example, sea turtles, fish, mice. So many offsprings are produced that there is not enough resources for them to survive, this leading to competition. And then, of course, the best suited to the environment will survive. Now, there is a specific example of natural selection which is part of your syllabus, and that is the MRSA and the non the MRSA bacteria, MRSA. Now, what are these? You see, when you apply an antibiotic to a population of bacteria, it applies a very strong selection pressure in favor of mutants able to resist the antibiotic. So we have a million bacteria and you put an antibiotic and maybe some of them survive. Why? Because they contain some genetic information which makes them resistant to that antibiotic. Antibiotic, by the way, kills bacteria. So this resistance is then inherited by offsprings or it can be passed on to the plasmids between bacteria. The resistant gene increases in frequency in the population. The species has evolved into two new forms, the resistant MRSA and the non-resistant MSSA. Now, what is MRSA or MRSA? Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a very difficult word. A strain of Staphylococcus aureus, which is a bacteria, also called Staph, is a bacterium that causes infections in different parts of the body. The symptoms of MRSA depend on where you are infected, but most often it causes mild infections on the skin, causing pimples or boils. It can also cause more serious skin infections or infect surgical wounds, the bloodstream, the lungs or the urinary tract. Though most MRSA infections aren't serious, some can be life-threatening. Now, how does this happen? You see, bacteria can become resistant to more than one antibiotic. Why? The resistance is always caused by a random mutation. But if the bacteria are exposed to more than one type of antibiotic, although they will more, more than likely be killed, a second mutation would occur. Could occur. And in this way, a bacteria could become resistant to two or more antibiotics at once. And this is what you all do all the time. When you take an antibiotic and you leave it after two, three days, and then again you are sick after two weeks, again you take another antibiotic. And because in Pakistan, you can buy antibiotics of the chemist shop. In other countries, you can't. You have to have a prescription for it. And you keep on buying some medicine. Somebody tells you, okay, take Augmentin. You start taking Augmentin. Then somebody tells you, okay, take Ciproxin. And you start taking Ciproxin. Well, this is where we are going to get now a lot of drug-resistant, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So it will be multi-antibiotic resistant bacteria and ultimately a time comes when there are no antibiotics left for these bacteria. So please do not take antibiotics unless you are advised. And if you are advised to take it and you say, okay, take it for five days, then don't leave it after two days because you're just feeling better. Take it for the prescribed course. Antibiotic resistance and MRSA, some strains of Staphylococcus aureus have evolved, become resistant to one or more of the commonly used antibiotics, including methicillin. These are termed methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus, this form is still contained by the use of antibiotics. So these will die if we give them antibiotics. MRSA is very common in hospitals. Here, patients tend to be more vulnerable to the infection that is older sicker and weaker people. People live together and are examined by doctors and nurses that have just touched other patients. So they are the ones who are transferring the bacteria to you. If you are a patient, it's actually the doctors and the nurses which are transferring it to you. Many antibiotic strains are used. Any resistance strains therefore have an advantage and they will not be destroyed. So hospitals stays have been now become very short. If you've had an appendix, well, the next day you'll go home. If you've had knee replacement surgery, it's a very, it's a very uh, intensive surgery. But after two days, they will discharge you and they say you should go home. Because in the hospital, 
you are more prone to get infections. Now, the advantages of selective breeding. Selective breeding or artificial selection is tries to establish certain traits that animal will pass to the next generation. Now, these are traits that human find desirable in domesticated species such as disease resistance, strength, calmness, more lean meat and endurance. So you can see how the chicken has evolved. You can see how the modern corn has evolved and how now we want this more crop yields and we want uh, more meat. So we, we, we've encouraged, we've, we've crossed the right uh, animals and we've got these now offsprings which are going to grow very fast and then we can sell in the chickens in the market for the meat. Similarly, the case of the corn, we want more uh, the large size of the corn. So the larger the size, the more of the fruit, the more that the money that the farmer is going to get. Now, whenever you have finished uh, revising this chapter and going through the video, please once again go through the syllabus because this will then tell you how much you have understood and what you have not understood. So, I mean, going through the syllabus again, describe natural selection with reference to variation within populations, production of many offsprings, struggle for survival, including competition for resources, reproduction by individuals that are better adapted to the environment than others, passing on of their alleles to the next generation. Describe how the inherited features of a population can evolve over time as a result of natural selection. So, you see, what you have to understand is, you have to understand all these different points. Describe the development of strains of antibiotic resistant bacteria including MRSA as an example of natural selection. Then describe artificial selection which is also called selective breeding with reference to selection by humans of animals or plants with desirable features, the ones which we want. Crossing these to produce the next generation. Then selection of offspring showing the desirable features. Then repeating over many generations. And then the artificial selection, the production of economically important plants and animals. This is the third video on this chapter and that completes this chapter 17. And now in the next coming weeks that we will study the last two chapters, which is chapter 18 and chapter 19. Thank you very much for your time and for leaving, leaving all the positive comments. Thank you very much once again.